I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack on the United States Capitol. Like all Americans, I am outraged by the violence, lawlessness, and mayhem. America is and must always be a nation of law and order. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. To those who engaged in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. Hi again, everyone. It is 5 o'clock in New York. I'm Ayman Mohideen in for Nicole Wallace. How far we have come 24 hours after the Capitol insurrection, and that was the stance of the ex-president. He came out against them unequivocally, against those rioters who violated our laws, against the violence and horror of that day. But that position did not last very long. And here we are, three years later, with Trump as the presumptive Republican presidential nominee, pledging to pardon those he now calls hostages. Like Trump said in that first clip, the people who broke the law on January the 6th paid or will pay as the investigation is not over for their crimes. The Justice Department charged over 1,300 people, uh, about 500 of which have been sentenced to prison. But now they are viewed by Trump as wrongly imprisoned, as loyalists who he must stand up for now. And we saw it on full display this weekend as he began his rally in Ohio by playing the national anthem recorded by convicted January 6 rioters who are now in jail. It was a moment that signified Trump's larger campaign strategy, one the AP describes as using the Capitol attack as a cornerstone of his bid for the White House. This from the AP's reporting. Initially relegated to a fringe theory on the edges of the Republican Party, the revisionist history of January the 6th, which Trump amplified during the early days of the GOP primary campaign to rouse his most devoted voters, remains a rally centerpiece, even as he must appeal more broadly to a general election audience. His elevation of the January 6th criminals is just one aspect of his anti-democratic platform. He stokes fear and division using hateful language. He said he will be a dictator on day one. He uses his own indictment over his role on the January 6th as a political tool. And he said that he will weaponize the Justice Department to go after his enemies. For the ex-president, it is all about who is on his side now. A piece in Semaphore looked at Trump's evolution towards embracing the rioters, writing in part... Another crucial factor in Trump's growing support for the cause may have been his own confrontation with American law enforcement, including over charges related to his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. The biggest thing that helped us was him getting arrested so that the rest of the world can see what is happening to January Sixers. That is to Merritt Perryman, whose husband, Brian Jackson, was charged in connection with the riot. She told Semaphore during the nightly vigil outside of the D.C. lockup beside the Anacostia River. Now he's welcome to the family. And that is where we start this hour with former assistant U.S. attorney Maya Wiley, plus former RNC spokesman and host of the Bulwark podcast Tim Miller and Democratic strategist MSNBC senior political analyst Matt Dowd. With me here on set, Democratic strategist and director of the public policy program at Hunter College, Basil Smichel. It's great to have all four of you with us. Tim, uh, I'll start with you. And we, that soundbite there from Trump, you know, calling it a heinous attack, describing it as lawlessness, the demonstrators uh, defiling the seat of power. What would have happened if he kept that position he had on January the 7th up until this day? See, that's a hard counterfactual, Eamon, right? Because <laughs> the fact that he changed his position into one where he was correct, right, that the election was stolen from him, that the people that attacked the Capitol that day were not rioters but were patriots, that new position that he developed went a long way, I think, to helping him box out everybody else in the Republican primary, right? Because it is, is not logically consistent if you are a MAGA voter, if you're saying, well, I like Donald Trump, I thought he did a good job, and, uh, you know, he was robbed of the election, and they've t tried to steal everything from us, and they're, they're trying to punish him now, and the deep state's coming after him, well, then why would you go to somebody else, right? Like, if you've bought that, and we know that about 60 percent, give or take, of the party has bought that line, then that doesn't leave room for anyone else to lead the cult. And so, you know, in theory, he would probably be better off today with swing voters, right, if he had actually lived up to his law and order rhetoric. 
strike and said that people broke the law should be punished. But would that have made him look weak with his own base? Right. It's kind of hard to to work that out. And I mm. think that what we see now today is not just that he is praising them as patriots, but he's saluting them. Uh, you know, I think that that video at the beginning of his rally is very important. I mean, he he literally salutes them as if yeah. as if they are soldiers. And in, in some ways, they are his soldiers. And like this separatist MAGA, I guess to call it an army is too much, but uh, militia, maybe. Um, and and I think that is really the most alarming thing um, out of what we saw from the Trump rally, what we saw from this evolution from him to going from criticizing them to calling them patriots to now saluting them as if they are heroes and as if, if they're heroes that might, you know, I think maybe again, uh, challenge the country. Maya, I wanted to read a little more from the uh, semaphore piece that I cited at the top. Uh, in part, quote, January 6th, families, defendants and their lawyers were uncertain what to make of Trump's sporadic early remarks, they said. Many were disappointed by what they viewed as a lack of support from the former president, starting with his failure to grant them pardons before leaving office. In early 2022, Joseph McBride, a lawyer for multiple January 6th defendants, went to Mar-a-Lago to speak with members of Trump's team. Since that first meeting, McBride says he is spoken with people across Trump's orbit, even meeting with Trump's legal team on occasion, and that January 6th events have grown organically over time. Uh, Trump is easy to manipulate. He listens to anyone who shows him loyalty. Do you think he is held hostage by this crowd, or do you think he is driving this crowd's position? You know, I... It's hard to answer that question except to say that Donald Trump is all about Donald Trump. And what we have seen is he's had a terrible, horrible, very bad day, week, year, whether it's all of the indictments that he has faced, his civil trials, uh, the most recent news where he's having trouble uh, raising his $464 million bond he's got to pay, whether that's true or whether he's trying to distract from that, we don't know. But here's the bottom line. He is not doing well. He's not doing well because law enforcement is doing its job, because prosecutors are doing their job, and because in many of these instances, people are standing up to him, including bringing civil suits against him and his company. And what we've always seen from Donald Trump is whatever is most expedient for Donald Trump is what Donald Trump will do, including those words you played at the top of the hour. And I think the problem that we see here is both the deep division and understanding of facts in this country, but also the fact that there are far too many people, particularly in politics, in elected position, willing to take up the reins even when they don't believe it uh, and support the lies, the distraction, and the deep divisions that it's driving for a politics that's about power and not about people. And that's what we need to focus on, is what ensures that people know the facts and understand their power at the polls. Matthew, this, um, this position from Trump, his evolution, goes really beyond just a revisionist history of the Capitol insurrection, as much as it is gaslighting us all to see him pivot like this. But Trump has continued to push uh, the big lie. He's gone on so far to install election deniers in key positions uh, within the RNC. He certainly lobbied for people who are election deniers on the campaign trail in the midterms and elsewhere. This is what the Republican Party now is. It's not just simply a party that uh, rejects um, basic decency, it also rejects the fundamental results of the 2020 election. Yeah, I mean, I, the thing about Donald Trump, and I know Tim knows this because he was involved in it, I'm not opposing him in 2015, 2016. Donald Trump understands the current Republican Party and what it's become better than anybody, better than any of the elected officials who ran for office before him, who also ran against him. He, he's understood it since 2015, which is why he's won the nomination, which is why he continues to get 80, 85 percent approval rating among Republicans in, in, in today's environment. He knows what the Republican Party is, and he knows that teleprompter speech. I would say his thought process hasn't been an evolution. The only part of the process where he spoke something differently was somebody put a teleprompter speech in front of him to say those words you played at the beginning here mm. that I don't actually think he agreed with and he never meant or never, but because everything he's done since and everything he did before showed that he actually approved of the insurrectionists at the, at the Capitol and helped facilitate it in the course of this. But to me, 
Donald Trump, we can, you know, debate Donald Trump and all that. Donald Trump is who Donald Trump is. But Donald Trump is, I think, by what he's been doing and, is, and now supporting and saying he's going to pardon these insurrectionists, is basically showing everyone what the Republican Party is. And Donald Trump has a great viewpoint into that party, as Tim said, in, in understanding the base of that party. And he's just widening open the book and saying, this is who the Republican Party is. And I think that clarity is important for all of us as we head into these elections. Yeah, it is. So